Hey guys, welcome to TST Garage. I'm Bart, and today in this video, I'll be showing you how to install the TST Industries brake light modulator on your bike. Now, a brake light modulator, sometimes called a strobe, sometimes called a brake light flasher, what it does is basically enables you to install some electronics on your bike so that when you press your brakes, the brake light flashes in some kind of pattern and alerts the drivers behind you that you will be stopping. Our particular brake light modulator comes pre-wired to a plug that interfaces with a sub-harness that we provide specific to your bike model that enables plug-and-play functionality with your bike. So that means that the installation is really fast and uh, you can do it yourself. Now the electronics inside, we do have the ability for you to program this unit to three different functions and then subsequently adjust the rate of the effect to your liking. Our first programmable mode is strobe alert. This mode will produce nine flashes and then stay solid for the duration of the brake engagement. Second one is intermittent pulser. Each cycle will flash 10 times and then pause. And then these cycles will repeat for the duration of the brake engagement. The last available option is pulser. And this one just basically provides continuous flashing for the duration of the brake engagement. Now we will show you how to install this. It's really simple. And then after the installation chunk, I will show you in detail how to get inside here, how to program the different modes and how to alter the rate of those different modes. We did think about the safety of such devices during the design phase. So we decided to design this in a way that it will be a pass-through component in case you experience a failure on board here, it will just pass through your normal brake function, which means you press your brake, your brake light lights up, there's just no effect. In case you do experience that failure, we do offer a warranty. So we have guys standing by in our support department that will take your call, email, Facebook message, whatever, and we'll get you replaced. And that's pretty much it. I'm really excited to show you guys just how easy this is to put on and configure. So let's get started. For this presentation, we have ourselves a KLX 230 here. It has had some modifications done to it. As you can see, we removed the OEM fender and fender lighting. Therefore, the tail light's gone. We have an aftermarket TST Industries tail light in here. It is LED based, but the procedure and the effect will be pretty much identical between OEM or aftermarket. So you can rest assured that our brake light modulator will work regardless of what setup you have. I do have to mention that the OEM light does use an incandescent light bulb as a source of light. Those lights react slower than LEDs. So you will likely have to adjust the speed of your effect down a little bit to a slower speed so that you could actually get a pulse uh, effect out of an incandescent light bulb. What we also have on this bike are the Quadrix D lamps out here. They do have red uh, function, so brake light and running as well as signals. So on this particular bike in this configuration, the brake light modulator will work on the tail light and the brake function of the outboard lamps. I will demonstrate that a little bit later. This installation is very, very simple made even simpler with the vehicle specific harness here. You have OEM connectors on either end. They are the opposite uh, sex of connectors. So you just plug through in series, good to go, whether you have this or the OEM setup. Our access into the bike on the left side is very easy. We just use the key, remove the side panel. On the right side, we will need to employ the help of an eight millimeter socket, remove these two fasteners here and here. And then the panel slides off, disengage the locking features towards the rear, pull it off. And now we have access here. What you see here is an eight millimeter socket head screw that is not holding anything on. We've eliminated the strap that holds the seat on. If your bike still has that present, one side of this will need to be taken off. So you would just take one side off and let the strap hang on the other side. Obviously we don't have that on this bike. So we will forego that step. I'm gonna switch over to a 10 millimeter socket. Remove this screw here. 
and its matching screw on the other side of the bike. After these two screws are pulled off, the seat is free to come off. We'll need to move it off in a upward swooping motion like so. That disengages this lock and this lock from its receiving geometry here. And now we have access to the wiring. We'll hop on top and I'll show you guys what to do. Up here, we will be removing these four fasteners with an eight millimeter socket. Then this tail needs to come off. If you're running the OEM setup, there is a clip that's fastened to the actual plastic piece here that fits under this clip geometry. So that needs to be slid forward and up. Similar motion to remove this if you're running the TST industry setup. The difference is the tab is in a little window so we need to compress this section here if you look under you'll notice where it is if you just press it down a little bit and move it back and forth side to side it clears out so this is the tab it goes in this window here let's move that to the side okay now we have access under here typically in the oem setup these connectors are up here and there's less bulk of this sort here because that's from our equipment. Some more plugs are here. So you will likely find the OEM connector for the tail light a bit forward of here. It is contained in this boot. So we are looking for the three conductor connector. This is a Sumitomo MTW110 type connector. It has a locking feature that you press down and pull off. So whether you're looking at an OEM setup or the TST industry setup, it's this connector that you have to pull and it's the only one of its kind in this area, so no sweat. Let's grab our brake light modulator, plug it through. Manage the bulk of the connectors here. Put that sleeve back on. Now we're connected. Let's give it a quick test. Okay, all of my brake lamps are flashing in unison. The pattern is provided by what's programmed onto here. I'm gonna finalize the installation here. If you haven't programmed your uh, brake light modulator flash pattern or played with the rate of the effect yet, Please watch the rest of this video. It'll instruct you on how to do that. If you're already ready to mount it, then go ahead and grab one of the cable ties that we've provided with the kit. We do send two cable ties with these kits. Use one or two, whatever, whatever is appropriate for your installation. I think for us here, one will be enough. So I just like to manage my cable bulk so that it doesn't bunch up. I do like to have my modulator body upwards with the cap and downwards with the grommet. If you were to put it backwards, if you get a lot of water through here, there's a small chance of getting water in through that grommet. Um, so this is just a little bit of a safer bet. I like to have my modulator body in between these two relay components. I'm gonna grab a Phillips head screwdriver and I am going to loosen this screw here. This gives me a little access under this bracket. I'm gonna loosen this guy here as well. You don't have to take them out. I just wanna lift up on this bracket and be able to pass my cable tie through from this hole to this hole. form my zip tie so that it has a hook upwards. That way, when I pass it under here, it just pop back out for me. I could grab it like so. If you notice here on the modulator body, we have designed in this channel that is perfect size for a cable tie because this is the main means of mounting these guys to frames and bike components. Once this is tied off, it's not going anywhere. 
All right, that's looking good. Let's go ahead and tighten down on that bracket set. Okay, all of my cable bulk is distributed nicely. Nothing is gonna run the risk of getting snagged or pressed on by any of the other components. Once we reassemble, I'm gonna cut off the excess here. Nice and neat. And now the rest of the flow will be the reverse order of disassembly. If your bike uses the strap over the seat, this would be the perfect time to reintroduce that strap and tighten it down. Ours does not, so I'm gonna skip that step. Get this panel back on. And the left side panel just goes in with the key. And that's it. I'm gonna test it one more time and then we'll be good to go. All right, perfect. This job's complete. For mode selection and rate adjustment, we will need to get inside this capsule to access the electronics. These two Phillips head screws will need to be removed. What I like to do is unscrew them until they disengage from the receiving threads and leave them in the cap Otherwise, it's pretty easy to lose them. If we pull them off with the cap, they are self-captive. All right, now we'll identify the parts here. This button is the mode selector, and this potentiometer is your rate adjuster. Clockwise is faster, counterclockwise is slower. Let's first do our selection of modes with the brake pressed. Press the button once to toggle to the next available program. Now the brake does have to be pressed so that the unit powers up, otherwise you won't be able to make the selection. If you find that you've pressed the button but the selection has not been changed, just do it again with the brake pressed. So now we will go on to the next program, press the brake once more, press the button once, and now you're in the next mode. Now we've switched twice, so pressing it one more time will return to the original mode that your unit arrived in. Now for rate adjustment, we'll be using the potentiometer. With the brake pressed, we can turn it clockwise to make it go faster, counterclockwise to decrease the rate. Now in brake alert, you will only have nine flashes to make your adjustment and then it'll stay solid. This one doesn't actually lend itself to really fast flashing at the top of the range. Bottom of the range is unusable. So I like to set it somewhere towards three quarters to maybe 80% clockwise. And that does it for me. Now if we change to the next one, this one is the Pulsar. And this one just keeps on flashing, so I like to have it going pretty fast here. Choice is really up to you. If you want to explore the next mode, we have the intermittent pulser. This one to me belongs somewhere close to the top of the range, makes it the most visible. But again, freedom means choice. The decision is ultimately up to you. Once you're done with your adjustment and you're where you want to be with all your modes and rates, replace the cap. Turn the screws back in, and it really is just that simple. Replace your brake light modulator in the space that you decided to keep it, and you're good to go.